Summary of Rhinoceros by Eugene Ionesco Jean and Beringer meet at a cafe on a sunny Sunday. Jean, who is dressed in a nice suit scolds Beringer for being late, while Beringer seems to be in a state of disorder. When Beringer is drunk, he makes fun of the fact that he wants to drink so early in the day. Jean gives Beringer an extra tie, a comb, and a mirror because she doesn't like the way he's dressed. Jean tells Beringer he feels bad about being his friend and lists all the ways he needs to improve his looks. Beringer says he needs to drink to relax because he can't stand having a normal routine. Jean says it's something everyone needs to get used to. As a rhinoceros runs down the street, they talk about where Beringer was last night. The waitress, the grocery store worker, the housewife, the grocery store worker's wife, and Jean all stand and point at it. Berginger doesn't seem to see it. The logician, the old gentleman, and the housewife all show up and say something about the rhinoceros. The rhinoceros knocked the housewife's grocery basket off the counter, so she asks the logician to hold her cat while she puts her basket back together. She goes away. At the same time, Jean won't stop talking about the rhinoceros, but Beringer isn't interested. Beringer thinks it might have come from a zoo or a show, but Jean says their town doesn't have either. When Beringer tries to explain himself, Jean gets angry and accuses him again of being an alcoholic who doesn't think. He then accuses Beringer of insulting him. As Daisy walks into the next door food store, Jean stops Beringer from drinking. After noticing that Beringer likes Daisy, Jean tells him to cut down on his drinking. Beringer says that he gets scared if he doesn't drink. This time, the old gentleman and the logician are back. When the logician shows the old gentleman syllogisms, he gives him the one that says Isidore and Fricket are both cats if a cat has four paws and both of them have four paws. The old gentleman says that his dog is also a cat because it has four paws. The logician agrees with him, but warns him not to abuse reasoning. The logician asks the old gentleman to figure out what happens when they take two paws off of the cats while Jean makes a list of changes for Beringer to make. As a result, the old gentleman thinks that cats could have anywhere from six to no paws. But the logician says that having no paws wouldn't be fair, and that logic is fairness. There's another elephant charging through town. It kills the cat of the housewife. The housewife cries and brings the body of her cat back to the cafe. The crowd feels sorry for the housewife, but the old gentleman and the logician say cats die, which the housewife should have known. When people ask Jean if the second rhinoceros was the same as the first, she says there were two different ones. The first one was an Asian rhinoceros with two horns, and the second one was an African rhinoceros with only one. Beringer says this is silly because the rhinoceroses were moving too fast to keep track of their horns. Jean calls Beringer an Asiatic mongoloid, which is rude. This makes people talk about how Asians are just like everyone else. Everyone blames Beringer when Jean storms off in anger. While Beringer publicly feels bad about what he did, others argue about how many horns the rhinoceros had. The logical thinker asks the group what he thinks is the right question, how many rhinoceroses and horns. But everyone agrees that this doesn't explain why the rhinoceros is so violent. The grocery store owner asks if they're going to let rhinoceroses chase cats after he goes. According to Beringer, he drinks and plans to improve himself later. Bugard, Dudard, Mr. Papillon, and Daisy all show up at work the next day. Botard says very loudly that the rhinoceros story is made up by journalists and that the newspaper piece doesn't use the right words to describe either pachyderm or cat. He says bad things about church and racism by calling the people who saw the rhinoceros names because they don't work on Sundays. Botard keeps making fun of Daisy when she says she saw the rhinoceros. Beringer sneaks into work just in time to sign in. He joins the chat and says he saw the rhinoceros. But Botard makes it sound like Beringer isn't a reliable witness because he loves Daisy and drinks too much. While they talk about how many horns rhinoceroses or rhinoceroses have, Mr. Papillon makes them all work. Everyone works until Botard says that Dudard is part of a bad group that is behind the rhinoceroses. 
When Mr. Papillon gets home from work, he checks to make sure that Mr. Burf is not there. He says that Mr. Burf will be fired. Mrs. Burf shows up, feeling tense and short of breath. A elephant chased her and is waiting at the bottom of the stairs, she says. Her husband is sick. The rhinoceros quickly destroys the stairs. Botard says he can see it, and they note that the rhinoceros only has one horn. They're not sure if it's Asian or African, though. When Mrs. Burr finds out that the rhinoceros is actually her husband, Mr. Papillon talks about firing him. Botard says he will involve the union. Daisy calls 911 to get everyone out of the building as Mrs. Burf jumps down the stairs and onto her husband's back. Botard says in a mysterious way that he never denied that there were rhinoceroses and threatens to reveal the plan. Daisy comes back with the news that the fire department is busy with other calls about rhinoceroses. The firefighters use the window to help everyone get out. Berenger goes to see Jean, but Jean is sick and doesn't answer the door when he knocks. Berenger says he's sorry for being stubborn and getting angry about the rhinoceroses. Jean coughs and says he's sick, but he doesn't explain what's wrong. He says he has a lot of energy and starts working out. Berenger tries to figure out why Jean is sick and her voice is getting rougher, but Jean says that Berenger's voice is changing. They notice a bump on Jean's forehead, and she starts running back and forth to the bathroom coming back to the bedroom with skin that is getting more and more green. When Berenger says this, it makes Jean angry, so she doesn't want to see a doctor. When Berenger notices that his skin is getting harder, he jumps away. Jean starts to eat a magazine and says that people make him feel bad and that he'll hurt them. Jean starts to whistle and says that Berenger is obviously drunk. As they talk about Mr. Burf's change, Jean fans himself with his sleep shirt and says that Mr. Burf changed on purpose and that he's better now. Berenger is shocked and says rhinoceroses should live their own lives, but they shouldn't hurt other people or damage what they own. It's loud for Jean to say that he wants to replace morals with the law of the jungle and that humanism is dead. Then he says that Berenger is biased because Berenger doesn't like rhinoceroses. After hitting Berenger, Jean runs back to the bathroom and changes into a rhinoceros. Outside, Berenger sees other rhinoceroses destroying park chairs. He tries to stay with Jean, but Jean pulls away and screams. A few days later, Berenger has bad dreams while rhinoceroses rush outside. When he falls out of bed, he wakes up, checks his wrapped forehead for a bump, and drinks. Duddard comes by, but Berenger doesn't recognize his voice. They both agree that if someone doesn't want to hit their head, they won't. Duddard is worried about Berenger and makes sure that he doesn't have a bump on the head. He tries to make Berenger feel better as they talk about how Jean has changed. Duddard tells Berenger not to think about it and that people aren't changing to get back at him. Duddard says Jean might have wanted some fresh air, that rhinoceritis is just a disease, and that Jean was also just a weirdo and not like other people. Anxious, Berenger pours himself a drink and thinks that alcohol can help with outbreaks and that Jean's lack of alcohol may have made him more likely to get rhinoceritis. If Berenger can get better enough to go outside, Duddard says, he'll see that the rhinoceroses are calm and funny. But Berenger says he can't see it that way. He says that they could reason about it if it happened somewhere else, but seeing it happen to their friends makes it personal. He says he can't get used to it, but Duddard tells him that Berenger can't judge people for the choices they make. Duddard says that Mr. Papillon turned into a rhinoceros, but Berenger doesn't think this is funny at all because he thought Mr. Papillon had a moral duty to not change. Duddard takes a flower from Berenger's plant and eats it. Duddard says that Berenger is not accepting, and the two of them argue about whether the rhinoceroses are bad or just weird. Berenger tries to use reasoning, but Duddard stops him. In the end, Berenger says that he just knows that the rhinoceroses are bad. The logician is called by Berenger, but when he looks outside, he sees a rhinoceros wearing the logician's hat. Duddard thinks that the logician must have given his change a lot of thought since he is a very smart person. Duard smokes his cigarette and lets Daisy in while Berenger yells out the window. 
Daisy turns down Dudard's advances, checks on Berenger with worry, and tells him that Botard has changed into a rhinoceros and that he told them they needed to adapt to the times before he did this. The Berenger is scared. As they get ready to eat, the three talk about what can be done about the rhinoceroses. They decide that nothing can be done because everyone knows a rhinoceros and animal rights activists would get involved. As they watch the firefighters turn into rhinoceroses and destroy the fire station, Dudard starts to think that he'd like to try being one. Daisy asks Dudard to join her for lunch, but Dudard gets tense, charges the door, and turns into a rhinoceros. Daisy and Berenger can't tell him apart from the other rhinoceroses. Daisy and Berenger both say they love each other, but Berenger says she isn't trying hard enough to stop Dudard. After they kiss, Daisy tells Berenger that they can't change other people's lives. When Berenger tells Daisy that he hasn't been drinking today, Daisy gives him a single glass. Even though Berenger says he will get better now that they are together, he can't stop thinking about how Jean has changed. Daisy tells him to flee into his own world, but he doesn't agree. The phone goes off. A rhinoceros trumpets is heard when Berenger picks it up. A rhinoceros is also in the radio news. Berenger refuses to stop the phone when Daisy asks him to, which makes Daisy angry. They promise to look out for each other, and Berenger tells their rhinoceros neighbors to be quiet. Daisy says there is nothing that can be done and won't have children to save the human race. Her love for Berenger is weak, she says, while the rhinoceroses look happy and full of life. Berenger hits her, and even though they say they will love each other, Daisy hears the rhinoceros's song and decides to leave. Berenger looks at himself and wonders if he's even speaking French. He wishes he had horns and tough skin. Even though he feels bad about not being able to change, he says he will stay a man as he drinks his brandy. About the author. Ionesco was born in Romania, but he lived in France for most of his childhood. As a kid, Ionesco had a kind of out-of-body experience in which he felt like he was floating and lit up. When he came back to reality, he saw that the world was broken, meaningless, and corrupt. This event had an effect on many of his later works, such as Rhinoceros. As a teenager, he moved back to Romania after his parents split up and went to the University of Bucharest to study French literature. In 1936, Ionesco got married and had a daughter. In 1938, he went back to Paris to study. When World War II started in 1939, Ionesco tried to go back to Romania for a short time but ended up staying in Marseilles, France, to wait out the war. He then went back to Paris soon after the war was over. Ionesco wrote criticism, poems, novel, and theoretical works over the course of his career. He mostly wrote in French. He died at age of 84. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.